The Lord is our shepherd, I shall not want him, make it I like down in a green pasture, yes, him lead it I beside still water them, him restorate I soul, him lead it I in other part of I justness for him name seek. Yay! Do I rasta go walk through the valley of shadow of death, I can't fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff them comforted I and I. Who no prepared a table before I in the presence of our enemy, them. Who no anointed I head who to no oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy, I go follow I all the days of I, Ivan. I go dwell in the house of the Lord God. Ja! Kadamawe gromabea tela e higzag beer tana istalin abashante shante 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 shante. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most Ija shall therein abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and them is safe. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Jah shall deliver him from all of them. Oh, how good and how pleasant it is for Jaja people to live together in iron. It is like that precious ointment upon the head and beard. Upon the head of Aaron, down his beard, all the way down his garments. The Lord loveth everybody. Him give everybody a gift of life. And I give thanks. How my house of Bolisa, I don't know what I was sick player for. How I tell you more, hey. Oh, you all are down. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shonemo, where we speak truth. The power, the ultimate truth. And my name, Black Rasta. Now, in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And each time this black pot sits on the fire, there is something super sumptuous cooking ingredients of so many different types, shapes, and sizes. Oh, aroma and even flavor. Abandon all their differences. Relegating all this to the background and relocating it to the black pot where they are subjected to some good amount of heating. At the end of it all, sumptuousness in all its topmost palatability is served in terms of food. Ironically, the ingredients and the black pot do not even participate in the eating of the food. It is us, the eaters, who do. Yet every time, the black pot and the ingredients will collaborate in order to provide the sumptuousness, oh my God, of food. What lesson can we derive from this? It's a lesson of selflessness, a lesson of sacrifice, and a lesson of generational thinking. My brother, my sister, this is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonemo. And here we speak truth to power. Here we do not criticize, but if we must criticize, we'll just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. How many of us would plant trees that would take 30 years to grow if we knew that we would live for only two years? How many of us will continue to serve the purpose of the masses? Looking at the bigger picture rather than our own selfish interest. Think about it, my brother. Think about it. Think about it. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushodomo. Any country that is devoid of selflessness, sacrifice, and generational thinking is not deserving of being called a country. It is an empty box. Here, we teach only patriotism. We talk about only patriotism, no politics, no sports, no religion, and no shenanigans. Straight to the point. I want to thank you, family, for joining us. And I want to say thank you so much for always making time to be with us. Oh, yes. We are live on YouTube at this point. And our YouTube channel is Black Empire Media. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, oh, my God, you are going to lose out. Very soon, more programs are going to be unleashed on you unrolled on this show oh my god and this channel is going to be the ultimate in just a few weeks note that 
It's the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushonomo. And this is the Black Empire Media. Yes, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you and we love you. Oh, my God. Now, remember, we are going on a nationwide tour. We are hitting war on the 2nd of March. What is the tour all about? We are going to every region of Ghana. Now, wherever we go, we will choose a school and invite all the students who are interested to come and listen to a one-hour lecture on patriotism. Right after that, we serve them hot meals and also cold drinks so that they can go back home with at least a miniature Ghana flag and a lot of patriotism in their heads. So we grow up better patriotic children and youth. That is what the nation is always crying about. My brother, my sister, we need your support. This has been endorsed by the GTA, Ghana Tourism Authority, and we are grateful for that. But we need your support to be able to do this. In the ninth, in every region, we will put up a concert and play. So when people come to watch us, we'll give the opportunity to them to also listen to words of patriotism. We are catching them using entertainment and music. We are catching them going to the schools and using education. My brother, my sister, my cousin, my uncle, my niece, donate to us so we can do this. It requires a lot of logistics. Maybe you can give us food. Maybe you can come out and say, listen, Black Rasta, I will provide food wherever you go. You can also say, oh, I will provide drink wherever you go. The students who are going to attend, I'll give everybody drink. I'll give everybody food. We will thank you. We'll put up your name here and advertise your business as well. My brother, maybe you can also provide us with instruments. You can say, oh, Black Rasta, every region we go, we will meet you there with instruments and a stage so that you can perform for free with the people. Maybe you could also say, it's water I have. I'll give you bottles of water wherever you go. We will accept that. Maybe you can also say, listen, I have a printing press and we make miniature flags. We will make miniature Ghana flags for you. We need 100,000 of those flags. Any number you can give to us, we have no choice. We shall pick that. These are the things we need. If we get this, we don't need a penny. Maybe you are also a hotel owner. You have hotels all over Ghana. Or you have friends who have hotels all over Ghana. You have businesses all over Ghana. And you say, every region you go, Black Rasta, you and your team, we are donating this number of rooms to you. Oh my God, this store would have been so sweet. We don't really need your money. What we need are these logistics. But if you don't have the logistics, you can donate cash to us and we will put the cash in some very good use. It is the Black Port. Remember, 2nd March 2024, as we see on the screen, we'll be hitting WA and we'll be going to a secondary school there, you know, or at some large space there where we'll invite students to come and listen to words of patriotism. It will all be filmed and at the end of the day, we'll bring it out. It is our little widowed might to be able to bring patriotism to our people. If you support this, let me hear you say, yes, Ghana, come here. Now, today we have four very interesting issues we need to look at. And we are going to be very snappy with that. Number one, my youth, watch it. It says what? A team chief summoned for endorsing Mahama. Why is it important to add a team chief? Is it to be able to identify which chief it is? Does it ring a bell when we say a team does it ring a bell? Now, which chief is this that is endorsing a political candidate? Do you know that chief? Have you seen him before? Run the story, my youth. Watch this. And this is from my own three news. He says, Achim, Ebuakwa traditional council summons Bafo Oudedu Ejakun Minta II for endorsing Mahama. Achim Ebuakwa. Run the story, my youth. My God. It says the Achim Ebuakwa Traditional Council has invited Anko Biahine of the Begro Stool, Bafo Oudedu Ejakun Minta II, for endorsing the black be flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, former President John Dramani Mahama, ahead of the 2024 elections. 
Now the hearing on the matter has been rescheduled from February 12, 2024 to February 19, 2024. Now, the summon was after the council received a petition against him filed by Dasibre Ofosu Kwabi Aye Biashe Ochre Sohine Adodao and Ochami Owusu accusing Nana Owuredu Ejakun. According to the petitioners, Bafo Owuredu Ejakun Minta the second has brought the name of Begros, the Begros tool into disrepute by engaging in partisan politics. That should away. Now, it is interesting how these things are panning out. First and foremost, when we talk about Echim Ebuakwa, in fact, it was a very powerful entity in our history in the days. And it's still very powerful. They also had a Ya Asantua in there. <coughs> Excuse me. That Ya Asantua, my brother, my sister, was so powerful. She was a king. I'm choosing my words carefully. She was a king. Nana Dansua, the first very powerful woman. She went to war against the Ashantis at the Battle of Dodowa, a.k.a. the Battle of Akatamainso, and defeated the Ashantis, including their chief warrior, Opoku Frede Frede. Opoku Frede Frede was a feared warrior of the Ashanti. And before they went to war, the Ashantini at the time boasted that he would catch the gas and all the people supporting the gas, he will mold them into a tiny little bit and force them into the mouth and the belly of the little fish called camphra. Camphra is a small fish. Very tiny fish, not bigger than this finger. The Asantehini boasted that he would go to war against the Accra people the guns, and whoever was supporting the guns, the Achim, the British, mold all of them into a little token and push that into the belly of the camphra. The Asante Hini was so, so authoritative on that. And he believed that Opoku Frede Frede was most powerful. Of course, he had never lost any war. And when they came to Dodowa for the war, you know what happened? The war was led by a woman, Nana Dansua. She was a king. The king of Achim. Her headquarters was at Achim Buakwa. History doesn't tell you too much about that. Check our history channel. We talked about this powerful woman. Nana Dakua. That's the name. Nana Dakua. You know what happened? She was the one who led the whole army and defeated Opoku Frede Frede. When Opoku Frede Frede was defeated and the Asante Hini was injured, they carried him in a broken palanquin. No more Adwa. They were running giddy 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 back to Kumasi. Opoku Frede Frede, who had never lost any war and who everybody loved, including all the beautiful ladies in Ashanti, was so ashamed. He started crying. Yay, Timmy Amini. Yay, Poku Freddy Freddy, and Ungua Sebe Cran, ye. And Ungua Sea Quaba, and Ungua Sea Aquaba. Hey, my fairy, Obana, I am his say. 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 He kept saying, Obana, I am his say. And he ran all the way to Amakum in Kumasi. He locked himself in his room and committed suicide because a woman from Achima Buakwa, had defeated him alongside the Gan army and the British. For the first time, there was the firing of serious weaponry from the British. They used cannonballs for the first time in the history of this country's wars. It's not a history class, so we won't go too deep into it. 
It was from that time the Asante women started shaving around their heads. In mourning. In ancient Israel. You know what they did? When they were mourning, they wore sackcloth. And they poured ash and dust onto themselves. And mourned. You who read the Bible, you would see this in it. But the Asante women shaved around their head like Sakura. Around their heads. And they called it Jisen crime. Simply meaning, it's only the Accra people who can do this to us. In mourning, but with time, Jisen crime got corrupted and it became known as Densin crime. Today, when you see the Asante women dying, dancing, uh, Adwa, king, 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 with their heads shaved all over, lips painted dark, is in remembrance of the war that Opoku Frede Frede fought and lost against Nana Dakwa of Achim. Having given you a brief history of the power of the kingdom of Achim, they and their Santis were always at war, even though they are also Akans. The rivalry has continued up to this date. In fact, when Achim supported J.B. Dankwa and the rest in the days of Kwame Nkrumah, Ashanti also decided to support Nkrumah. Because if you support A and you are my enemy, I will support B, whether I like B or not. The friends of my enemies are my enemies. Do you get it? That is the history of Achim. Very powerful state. My brother, now watch this. They have always been in support of the founders of the UGCC which went on to split. One side went to become something else and another side became something else. And the NPP tradition is traced all the way to Echim Ebuakwa. Their king, Oforiata I, was a very nepotistic king. You know what it means to say nepotism? He wanted everything for himself and his family, family and friends. Read it in history. Don't believe me, read it. My brother, he was the one who established that Achim people should marry other Achim people. They shouldn't marry anybody except the people they were going to get married to were very rich and very influential. And you have a certain standing. It's historical. We're talking history now. So this is the beautiful state of Achem. That is where Nana Akufuado is from. His father from there. My brother and much more. They have always been in rivalry with Nkrumah. Up till now. Look at what Nana Akufuado is doing. Destroying the factories of Kwame Nkrumah. Destroying all the heritage and legacies of Kwame Nkrumah. All because of that funny rivalry. So for Mahama, who says he's an Nkrumahist and comes from a party, none other than the NDC. It's a taboo for any chief to endorse him in a chim. That's one reason. But put aside that, what does Black Rasta think about all this? Come here. I am embarrassed that a chief would endorse a political candidate. It's not part of your business. Think about Galamse, illegal mining. Think about the respect that is lost for the chief tansi institution, the traditional authority. Today, people speak anyhow to Asantehine. It takes some of us to come back and say, yes, even though we are not Asantis by blood, we are Asantis because we have married and intermarried and through our history, we have become one people. My brother, what would you gain if you look down on Asantehine? What would you gain if you kill Asantehine? What would you gain if Asante power is no more? Would that power be transferred to you? No, we should be proud that there is Asante kingdom. That when there are problems, we can fall on Asantehine no matter how young or old he is. To use that authority, the power of the stool, to be able to solve issues.
The Ashanti Kingdom is one kingdom that has had one of the best achievements in the history of Africa in terms of traditional authority. Let's respect that. Let's honor that. The rivalry was in the past. If any rivalry will come again, let us make it a very peaceful and beautiful one, like Nigeria Jollof and Ghana Jollof, rather than looking for the downfall of each other. The chief didn't behave well. By our laws, chiefs are supposed to stay away from partisan politics. How many of us remember Begro? In Begro, in those days, my brother, chief tansy disputes, including ritual murder. Today, if there is peace and calm, let us stay away from politics that will bring us rife. The chief has misbehaved. The chief should be summoned. And any other chief in Ghana, it doesn't matter whether you are in the Volta, or you are in the North, or you are in Ashanti, any chief that endorses a political candidate should be summoned and disciplined, like Asante Hini is doing to some of his sub-chiefs. My brother, in the days, the Roman Catholic Church tied people to a stake and set fire under them and burnt them. What crime? Because they read a certain book. Roman Catholic Church. The books written by Copernicus and the rest of them, saying that the world was round rather than the Roman Catholic Church's faith that it was flat. I don't go too much into these things when I'm dealing with traditional issues like this. So for the chief to do that is disgraceful. I support the idea that he's been summoned. Please make sure that you don't just take snap and drink and feed your gods with snap and let him go. Make sure that he's disciplined properly. It's the black pot, a.k.a. Kokushunumo, where we speak truth to power. Come here, my youth. Now the next thing we are looking at is equally interesting. Baumia dead to fix Boku crisis. If today we're talking a lot of history, hey, what is the Boku crisis? Listen to the names Kusasi against Mamprusi, Mamprusi against Kusasi. Do you think it's by chance their names end in C? C? They are brothers. Brothers are fighting. Like the Gomba and Konkomba fighting. We have become so myopic that we have decided to look at labels forgetting the DNA. Somebody write this down. We have become so myopic that today we focus on the label rather than the DNA of our ancestors. That is why today you can see a Dagomba man fighting a Kokomba man. That is why today a Mampusi man can fight a Kusasi man. That is why today a Talensi man will tell you he's not a fra fra. That is why today a man man will tell you that he has nothing to do with frafres because of the label. It's one ethnic group. One group. When the frafra man speaks, the Talisi man understands. The Talisi man speaks. The man man understands. The Musi man understands. The Dagomba man understands. Is it by chance? Our history needs to be taught to our people. There are more than 72 ethnic groups in the northern region alone. 72. My brother, the Moli Dagbani group, they are a group of people who are broken into different ethnic groups, but they speak the same language in different dialects. Somebody won't understand. The language is Akan. The dialect is Fanti. The dialect is Bonochi. 
The dialect is Asante Chi. But the language is Akan. One language, different dialects. Asante man gets up. He picks a gun against the Fante man. Oh, Fante four dear. Bono man. Ah, who bono ne who betray me dear? A crassism. You don't understand your history. Sometimes I sit and I cry that the same people are fighting and they call each other different. Why are you different? You think it's by chance the Fante man speaks and a Santi man understands? You think it's by chance and a Santi man speaks and a Bono man understands? Then you call yourselves different. Then you pick arms against each other, shooting and killing each other. As for the Boku crisis, the only thing that can solve it is selflessness. We must go back to our history. It doesn't matter who settled here first or who settled there first. We are brothers. I want to see Boku Naba, Kusasi Naba, go and sit in Mampurugu, in Waliwali, and sit there as a chief for one year. Whilst Mampurugu Naba comes all the way to Boku, he sits in Boku for one year. They do it like that. I want to see Kokomba chief go to Yendi and sit on the throne of Yendi. At the Yana's palace. And I want to see the Yana move into the Kokomba area and sit on it as brothers. Let's see who is able to develop it within the shortest time. My brother, it's the same compound. Does it matter who sits where? It's one people. Imagine we all could come together. If I go into the Frafra -fra area, I developed it the same way that I would have developed the so-called area that belongs to me. Can you imagine how much development we can have? Now, the, another, another interesting thing I need to talk to you about, and I end it there. Listen. Are you aware that there are some ethnic groups in the north that have vowed from the days of old that they will never fight. And after this day, they are not fighting, no matter how angry they are against each other. Should I tell you? We've said it several times on this show. The Mosi and the Dagomba, they are the same people. And the Dagomba queen decided to run away from her father. And she ran all the way to Burkina Faso. She met a man called Riley. Riley. Married her and they had a child called Widraogo. My brother, the same Dagomba has moved to Wagadugu. Does it make him a different person? He's the same person. But over there they call themselves the Moses. They have agreed. There is no way they, they, they will ever fight. Have you ever heard that there's a problem between the Dagombas and the Muslims? I beg your pardon, the, the, the Moses. It's the same thing. The Cicales and the Gonges have vowed that they will never ever fight. Have you ever heard of any kukuru kukuru? Look, I tell you a funny story. I think I told it here once. There was a time a woman was looking for a child. I was a little child then. Looking for a child, a baby. She had married this rich man. She had tried, especially in a society where childbirth is everything. She couldn't get the child. She sneaked into the Tamale hospital and stole a baby, a newborn baby. When she was finally caught, you know what happened? The police came in, giddy, 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 giddy with the issue. It came out that it was a Gonja woman who had stolen the baby of a Sasala woman. She didn't know that that was a Sasala woman. And the police were in the issue. It was supposed to go to court. You know what happened? The Gonja king sent a message in those days not too many phone calls ride a horse sit in a car go all the way and tell the Sasala king that this is his sister who is in trouble if they wait and anything happens to this one the ancestors are watching quickly the Sasalas went to the police and said hey it's our sister bring it home we shall solve it because of the vow it's the same vow between the Asantis and the Dangobas and the Nzima. 
Asante Kotoko, Nwa Kotoko, Nzima Kotoko. There's no day they will fight. No matter. They, because we don't tell our history. Asante man is coming up and he thinks that, oh, that's it. Who say we the Omuye stream for? Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. Omuye stream for sao. Omuye Kotoko for Nubi. Because of the history, Opoku Frede Frede, who was a chief warrior, was half Dagumba. In fact, if not full Dagumba. We need to tell our history. If we told our history well, no gunshot would be heard anywhere. We are all brothers. We came from the source. Coming all the way, we decided to branch into different areas. Does it make us different? Well, Baumia is being dead to fix Boku crisis. If, run the story, if what? If he wants to win in the north. And this is Alex Tete telling Baumia. Who is Alex Tete? Who is he? Do you know him? Do you know this man? Come here. I'm asking you. Do you know him? Run the story, my youth. Hey. The president of Citizen I Ghana, Mr. Alex Kokutete. So now you know who he is. He's the president of Citizen I Ghana. Has made shocking revelations concerning the details surrounding the death dispute in Boku between the Kusasi and the Mampusi. Come down here. Come here, my youth. Watch this. Now, in the video, Mr. Alex Kwekutete raised concerns about land ownership and independence in Northern Ghana. The conflict which existed even before 1980 is deeply rooted in geographical boundaries. The Mampusis insist on referring to the area made up of six administrative districts, Boku, Municipal, Zebila, Binduri, uh, Pusiga, uh, Garu, and Timpani, as Boku traditional area, while Kusasis consistently refer to the area as Kusaug traditional area. He stated that the vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, should urge Nayiri. Why Nayiri? Because he is from there, he's a Mampusi. The king of the Mosi, Moronaba. Why are they bringing Moronaba here? Because the Moronaba is from the Dagomba, the Mampusi, they are all one people. To release the land to the Kusasi, whom he sees as the rightful owners. Dash it away. That is what this man is saying. My brother, what will solve this problem is not just you own the land, take it and go. Or you don't own the land, go away. It's for us to go back into history. And when we go back into history, naturally, we will find a solution. Naturally, we will find a solution. Look at Ashanti. The Evers have gone there. Now they have a place called Angunaga. Carpenters all over. I'm a Kumasi boy. They have the Zongus. Made up of Kusasi, Mampusi. Everybody is there. My brother. And they all have chiefs. There is Togwi. When you go to Angunaga. They are eating. Akpule and Fetiri Dechi. Or Fetiri Toto. They are eating. Whilst the Kusasis and the Mampusis are also eating two Zafi and more. My brother, Baumea, as I said it before, you are in a very dire position because you belong to the Mampusi ethnicity. If you truly want to win in the area, and why do we even have to look at winning elections before we become sensible? I have given the roadmap already. It is a way of bringing the people together. How do you bring the people together? Speak to Nayiri first. They will listen to you most. Find a way out. This issue is between brothers. And it's the same brothers who will sit down, regret and cry and hug each other and say those days are over. Please, 
We've seen brothers fight. When they come to a certain realization and understanding, they throw away their weapons, hug each other and cry. It's the blackboard. A.K.A. Kukushonomo. And here we speak truth to power. When we return, we shall read your messages and we got more. Hey! Wayo! This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Koko Shodaman. Here we speak truth to power. Next story. And this is the penultimate story. It says, sex for movie roles rocked my career. And this is said by who? Akofa Ejiani. Beautiful. I met her a number of times. Feliz Pot. She has a restaurant on the street known as Tumu Street. And it's called Feliz Pot. It's a popular rest rest restaurant. And people like it. An actress. She spent a lot of time acting. She's one of the veterans we have now. And she's talking about sex for movie roles. Really? Run it, my youth. Watch this. And this is from Ghana Web. It says, sex for movie roles. Akwafa Ejiani narrates how rejecting a director's advances cost her. Popular Ghanaian actress Akwafa Ejiani has revealed how she was sexually harassed by a film director and lost a movie role for rejecting his advances. She made this revelation on the show BZ to Z show on Joy FM where she discussed some of the challenges women face in the showbiz industry. Now the award-winning actress said that the sexual harassment was a common problem in the entertainment industry, although it could happen in any field. Akofa narrated how, during the shoot for a movie series, a producer had asked her to lower her rates for two movies, but were to be shot back to back. The Azali actress said, she agreed to do so, but later regretted it when the director of the movie invited her to his room for a dubious reason. Mm -mm -mm. Now here is the director who asked me to come to his room. I said, come to your room and do what? He said, to watch a movie. I said, watch what movie? I mean, come on. Whatever you want to tell me, I don't need to come to your room. Apparently. He wanted something else. I said, like, seriously? Are you serious? She narrated to show who's Kwamidazi. Akofa said that upon her refusal to join him in his room, she was dropped from the second movie as a result. I didn't go to his room, and guess what? That cost me the next movie. And when I asked the executive producer, he said it was the director who was casting. She continued. She said that she had always trusted her abilities as an actress and that she had never compromised her dignity for any movie role. Dash. Dash it away. Now, first and foremost, I would like to play the devil's advocate. Yes, the devil's advocate. Maybe the director wanted a Jani Akofa to come into the room so he could show her a certain movie and a role somebody was playing, she wanted her to play it the same way. He wanted her to play the same way. 
But when she judged him already, he decided to pull the plug. The devil's advocate. I would have wished that a coffer would have gone there with another person. Maybe one of the cast. Let's come to the room. You sit with a person. Oh, when you called me, I was talking with him, so we decided to come together. And let's hear what the man would say. My brother, but that notwithstanding, let me play into a coffer's court. We have heard these stories over and over. It's cheap men who do that. My brother, in my heydays, in my heydays, when I say heydays, I mean heydays. If there was a lady that I liked and I was going to make an advancement, in other words, I was going to advance towards her with my proposal, and she came to me asking for a certain favor, I will never make an advance again. It's ended. Because I would always feel that, oh, this person is saying yes to me because of this favor that this person needs. I will never enjoy whatever I wanted to do with this person. Let alone somebody coming to me for a favor and I will take advantage of the person. It's never happened in my life. I'm not moralizing it on anybody, but I just feel that it is cheapness for any man to take advantage of a woman. You are cheap. If you truly want sex, there are prostitutes all over the place. If you are that lowly, go pay and have your way. I'm not a believer in prostitution. My brother, my sister, but there are some ladies out there who are not on the streets who are worse than prostitutes. What they do, if the prostitutes try those, the whole world would hear about them. Those who don't even stand on the streets of Accra and advertise what they do openly, they are worse. Some. What point is Black Rasta making? It has become so rampant. When a woman has to get a cast in order to play in a movie, she would have to open her legs. Do you know what you are eating, big man? Every open legs you want to enter, do you know what is in there? I was reading the Bible. Please, let me go to the Bible. The book of Proverbs. And it said that the seductress, you know who a seductress is? A woman who seduces, who lures you to come in for sex. She's like poison. And that when a man works so hard and he doesn't see the results but other people are enjoying the results of his work instead of having him enjoy that. It is because of sexual immorality. Adultery. Don't let me sound like a priest. But my brother, why do you have to take advantage of a woman before you give her a role? That is why we have poor movies coming out. They are not looking for the real actresses. They are looking for prostitutes who can give them sex in order to get a certain breakthrough. Let some of our actresses open their mouths to speak. You realize that this is garbage. How did they get into those movies? The director doesn't care to spend seven million hours making you speak the right sentence to getting a professional who will do it in just a split second. It's like that in the movie industry. All over Africa. At least in West Africa. And the same thing in our music industry. When you are a lady and you are coming to the movie, uh, music industry, somebody who says he's a manager, he's a he-goat, you will take a number of doggy styles before something starts happening. And even with that, it is not guaranteed that you will break through. We see them confessing every day. It's a shame, gentlemen. Again, I don't want to moralize it on anybody. But it would have been nice if you gave her the role to play. A man always has a way of making the woman feel like, yeah, she's getting extra, extra attention. 
Oh, yeah, it was so nice. You did it so good. Yeah, nice. Yeah, beautiful. Then at lunch, you buy her something small. You are drawing her attention to you. For all you know, in the night, she might just come knocking on your door. Oh, director, I just came to say thank you. So, oh, come in. Then she enters. There, the food can be sweet. But when you force the food, you force it to ripe, it will be bitter. I'm speaking in parables. It's the black pot. A.K.A. Kukushonamo, where we speak truth to power. When we return, Ebeye Ojiya. It's the black pot. Let's see your messages right now. All right. I remember we're going on a 16 regional tour, the whole Ghana. Please support us. Send us Momo. If you are sending it from abroad, send Wave and even more. We will get it. Blessed. And then we have a new number. Oh, praise God. And from tomorrow, we shall have the new number where you can just send directly into Black Empire Media. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. We just got a call from MTN that that merchant number is ready. So we're going to put it up so that you can send it in, especially those from abroad, and you won't have issues, you know, people asking you to bring what documents and what documents. Zacha Emmanuel, a.k.a. Governor from Wusuta, says, Jaw! Mirror says, hey, boy, boy. Governor says, welcome, Godfather. Wanini boy says, I have waited for long. Welcome, Black Rasta. Blessed Lord, my youth. Mirror says, we never give up. Mirror says, hey, great outfit. You look golden. Mm. Respect. I come from a land of gold. Jennifer Asukomami. Yes, Asukomami. Says, oh, is it Asukomami? Asukomami. Okay. Jennifer, Asu Kamame. Tanja for another beautiful week. Wayoi, run the story, my youth. Legendary Black Rasta. Kojo One Fool says, Bless up, my lord. Speaking truth to power. Rap Thunder says, Dope outfit. Youth president. Legendary Black. Love and respect, my youth. Bless the love. It's a Nigerian outfit, you know. Yeah. I use it for a, a music video which is yet to come out. You'll see it in it. Thank you for loving it. Mohammed Banjaya 1, a.k.a. MC Scorpion. Dobia Kaula. Welcome, legendary Black. It's Monday. Blaze the week with more fire. Run the story, my youth. Come here. Patriotism, not politics. Signed, MC Scorpion. Inside a shyman. And a ras osage for the wabil. Tindan do. Eguma do. bill. Says, Welcome. On board, Ja people. Asima Banda one says, Welcome to another wonderful, beautiful week with legendary Black Rasta and the crew. Woyoy, big up Asima Banda. Ekene Okoli, long time no see, says, Black Rasta, good to hear from you again. May God fight a battle mm -mm 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 -mm. that the enemy will bring you. Amen. Ras Osaje for Duabel. Tendan Doro. Goma Doro. Duabel Yunzuabel says, Yes. Let's all endeavor to support the My Dear Ghana Nationwide Tour. Very important program to promote nothing but Ghana at large. Of course, patriotism. Thanks so much. Mohamed Banjewan says, yes, Ghana. Please, do you remember 
this vibe in Tamale by you, Mamba Clot, Tamale people, my own people, do me shh. MC Scorpion. All right? And uh, this is Tahiru Faisal. It says, Patriotism, not politics. Service to God and country. Odum says, Welcome, Black. Wanini Boy says, Just sent my donations to the My Dear Ghana tour. Oh my God. Bless you, my brother. After this show, we're going to check it out. We are going to acknowledge every single soul. Trust me. Thank you so much, Wanini Boy. Petrina O2 says, Greetings, Black Rasta. Ja protect and guide you. Uh, Mark Hendrick says, Big up yourself, Black. Francis Ampim says, legendary black rasta, preach out the truth. No one is bigger than the truth. Why Ransford Fitty says, black rasta. Calling him Edwia Papa. And Mahama Edwia Boni. I hope you heard it. What happened to that case? So you see, this is what is called equalism. Let's condemn wrong. Remember I said no chief is supposed to do that. And if you have been a follower of this show, Ransford, Fiti, you realize that we've spoken about this issue. Omuapenu of is not a man who respects himself. He has sold allegedly cemeteries, royal cemeteries, to be used as fuel filling stations in his place. Royals who died, some of them they even exhumed and they were still fresh. We carry the story here. So my brother, this equalism thing, let's put it aside. Wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter who does it. When we see it, we will speak against it. Yaqub Usman says, Black, I disagree with you. Uh, because we are here. Uh, we are here and Ochihini himself and do oh. Well, we answer the same thing, Osman. So if Ochini endorses, should another person go ahead and do it after Ochini has been condemned? He's been condemned. Everybody said it was wrong that he did it. You understand? Look at how people have risen vehemently against Ochini. Have you seen Asante Ine do that? A man who respects himself that much? Ochini doesn't. Do you all want to go that lane? If a madman comes to take your clothes whilst you are bathing, will you come out and run after him with your langa langa? Why, hey, Fab -fab Fabra, hey, Fabra. Because the madman has done. Nobody is bigger than the truth. Ochini who encouraged a lot of galamse in this area. Those of you who follow this show, we have we've tackled these things over and over. Please go back to some of the old editions and you will see some of these things. Right? Any which way. We are closing. Final message. Akufu Ado dismisses Mohammed's Wasi critique. Who is Nana Akufu Ado? Nana Akufu Ado is the president of the Republic of Ghana. My brother, oversized suit wearing president. I don't know who sews his suits for him or where he buys them from. But well, the sense of fashion is zero. My brother, this is the president. He makes mockery of the country. Even his own vice president has decided to decouple him. He has decided to divorce him in a very embarrassing speech. Arrogant president. Everybody's running away from him. Alan is gone. Now his own vice president saying, that, hey, me, I was only the driver's mate too. It wasn't me. He has disgraced himself. Mahama spoke about Wasi Resorts and how people were buying resorts and how there was so much corruption in that area. Akufu Adwo wants to see everybody pass by hook or crook, fair or foul means, so that the credit will come to him. Oh, he did so well. Free SHS, seven trillion people passed and they are now in the secondary schools and they produce chaff. And Mahama said, we have to look at this. Three days after Mahama said that, look at what happened to the universities from Ghana in Nigeria. Look at what happened around. Even the Wayek, Wayek itself came out to say that there was cheating. 
Some of the students use AI to write their exam. How did they get mobile phones into the examination hall to do that? CSOs also came out and told us stories about this with evidence. How head teachers were asking for bribe so that maid servants who had never attended school can pass their exams in their schools. So what is Nana Kufuado saying? He's confused. When a man grows old up to his age, sometimes, I'm not against old age, they behave like little children. I think that is where the president has reached. Everybody's running away from him. We should impeach him so the nation can have a bit of respect. Run the story, my youth. Mohammed's criticism of Wasi resource lacks merit. Run it, my youth. President Nana Adodankwa Akufuado has expressed disappointment in former President John Dramani Mahama's criticism of the credibility of results from the West African Senior School Certificate Examination. The National Democratic Congress flag bearer last year alleged that some invigilators were lax, allowing teachers to assist students in answering questions, hence the high numbers of students passing the exams. These remarks followed Education Minister Dr. Yao Ose Duchum's announcement that the 2023 results were the best since 2015. Mahama Agi. That shit, my youth. Even all these people have been shamed. Wayek itself came out and said there was cheating. Widespread cheating. There was evidence of people buying results. You can tickle yourself and laugh. You can lie as much as you want. After all, you guys have been on a liar ton since you started. Guinness Book of Records for the most lies a political party can tell. The NPP. That's it, away. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you and I love you. Let's see your final messages. And we are done for the day. Tahir Rufaisal says, Black! How may I get involved in the history class? Please, we have that channel. It's called the African History Class. And Africa is spelled A-F-R-E-K-A-N. African History. And the class is K-L-A-Z. On the same YouTube channel, we update it every now and then. It's going to be a full-fledged channel when we move to our headquarters pretty soon. We will be inundated with so much history. The history of Africa and beyond. Jennifer Asukamame says, Growing up, I see chiefs or kings as the most powerful uh, leaders in a society. But today, because of politics, they are beginning to lose their value. I agree with you. Miro says, hmm, arrived. And Danny Man says, anyone with common sense knows he is talking about the wound to me case. Mm hmm. Is the one to me case and Abdul Rahman says hi Black Rasta good 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 mm. yeah. all right Danny Man says unfortunately he didn't say that when NDC allies were accused of making derogatory comments Danny Man says if we can win the tribalistic battle we shall definitely win the patriotism battle that is certainly true patriotism comes with everything Johnson Levi says, Black Rasta, I'm Johnson, watching from Paris. You're kind of a person, you, you're kind of a person, a rare in the country. And may Jack continue to bless and protect you. I will send mine, but not this man. Oh my God. You see these people who live abroad, they are so planned. They tell you this and they follow it up and they make it happen. Because in the environment where they live, your word is as good as cash. John said, we haven't received it yet, as we said. You said next month. We are looking forward to having it. And we appreciate you. And I promise you that whatever you send to us will be used to the letter, the last drop in the course. May God strengthen us. Amen. Bantasi Abdul Latif says, Assalamu alaikum, Black Rasta. I'm watching you from Saudi Arabia, Jeddah. Block, thanks to the Almighty Allah for another week. Please keep the fire burning. Why, oh, Big up yourself, Johnson Levi. Blessed, my name Black Rasta. And you can also send us Momo. Yes, and also send money into our bank account. Or tell us what you can give us. Maybe a place to sleep whilst we are on tour. Food to eat. 
feed the students, give them drinks, make the miniature flax, 100,000 we want, saying, help make this talk come to pass. It's not about Black Rasta. Even if you don't like me, what I'm going to do is for the benefit of our children in Ghana. Don't look at the messenger and lose out on the message. It's the black ball. Come here. And I want to say thank you so much for coming. I appreciate you and I love you. I'll catch you again tomorrow, same time. Until then, hey! Wayo! Oh, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs>